Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in to me today. I have a quick one. I'm going to keep this one really tight. And today I'm looking at just a quick chat about uh, exposing narcissists. And today I'm going to be talking about what going no contact tells the narcissist. Um, but also this includes what ignoring them um, or grey rocking or grey walling them also means. Because uh, grey rocking or grey walling a narcissist is not the same as going full no contact. Okay, so there are proven ways to be free of the narcissists and their manipulation, but we have to go no contact. It is the only method of dealing with these people and giving yourself a chance of living a life that is not controlled or bound to them. There will be long-term effects after you have left the narcissist, but I will mention that later in this um, podcast. So ignoring a narcissist in a workplace is not the same as going no contact. Sometimes in a family scenario or in a workplace um, situation, we have to interact with them. And so we can't get away from the approach of no contact. But what we can do is keep um, ourselves away from becoming a source of the narcissistic supply so that we're no longer giving them our attention with our interactions between um, you and the narcissist. So it's very cut and dry and you're being very straight to the point because anything emotional that you give them, they will manipulate and make you to be weak. They'll shame you for your emotions or anything that you say, they'll disagree with it because you have to see things from their viewpoint. You are not allowed to challenge them. Even when we know that they're wrong, they'll tell you that they're right and that you're wrong. And this could be over the most insignificant things like for example them telling you that the sky isn't blue and over long periods of time as we know with a narcissist what they do they break you down they break your confidence and they try to basically create a little mini me of themselves with you so once you start to see everything from their point of view that's how they control you and then you stop kind of thinking for yourself because your interactions are all based on their viewpoint with the world. So sometimes in some places you can't go no contact. Um, although no contact is the only option um, for actual survival long term. But um, in terms of working with them, you have to disengage completely and keep every interaction with them as minimal as possible. They will try and spread slander around you at the workplace or they'll try and talk to other people about you in the workplace. Same with a family member. If they're a narcissist, they will try and manipulate and control how other people see you. That way they can regain control over you, even if you are just keeping your distance. But the longer that you manage to keep your distance, the clearer and more powerful the message is to the narcissist, okay? So what you're really saying to them is that firstly, you're saying when you go no contact and you're ignoring them in any situation is that you don't need them, okay? Because their absence from your life will be very difficult for them to understand, a narcissist can't self-reflect. They don't have the ability to look at themselves and their own behavior and check themselves. They can't understand it. And even explaining it to them, they wouldn't be able to understand that. There's like a hole in their soul. And that's really what it is. It doesn't matter, um, by the way, if it's a friendship or a love relationship I need you to understand something that has really been a key um, point of me learning in my life. You will never be enough for a narcissist. It doesn't matter how beautiful you are. 
how lovely you are, how hardworking you are, nothing you do will ever be enough for them. They will always want more and they won't place any value in you um, other than the service that you provide them or the need that you meet for them unless they're playing a long-term game with you where later in life you're expected to be their caretaker or you offer a value to them um, that hasn't been revealed yet. But the narcissist will not reflect on that because they can't understand it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how much love you pour into this person. It, it just goes straight through them. They don't have a capacity for love. And it, it's said, and it is really interesting that when someone ha- is a narcissist or has NPD, um, everyone else around them will need therapy from being around the narcissist, but the narcissist will never seek therapy. It, it's highly unlikely that a narc will go into therapy um, from a viewpoint of wanting a change. They're not going to walk into a psychiatrist's office and say, hey, um, I need to do some work on myself. That, that's never, ever going to happen it's always the external world that is the problem with a narc. And um, unless it's a situation where they've had a mass exodus of people in their life and they, their viewpoint would be, I'm so fabulous and I'm so amazing. Why are people leaving me? You know, so it could never be from a point of view of deep self analyzing. Um, that's not going to happen. So the point that I want to make here is going no contact and removing yourself from them and remaining absent from them is going to become absolutely infuriating for them because the narcissist's relationship with everything around them is a power grab. It's a power dynamic. Okay, so when you show in any situation your absence or lack of interest what you're sending to the message to them is I can live without you. I don't need you. And the longer that you sustain the no contact, um, you're really showing them that you don't need to spend time with them. You're breaking down the false self, which is the false, the false ego that they live in, the false narrative, the false mask. And that creates a narcissistic injury to them because you're no longer upholding the false sense of reality that they've created with you. Okay, so in my advice in this um, podcast is that without, your, without their presence and influence, they can't understand how you can exist. As far as they're concerned, they have to control you. And when you cease communication, you're saying to the narcissist, you don't control me, all right? And this will, as I mentioned, send them into like an absolute meltdown. What the narcissist will have to do if you were their main supply point is they're going to have to start to invest more time and energy or money into other supply points to create a connection and build those supply points with other people. Um, those other supply points would have already been waiting in the wings. Um, say with, for it's a friendship, you would have never have been, you might be the main supply point to them, but that will have others on the side. And if it was a relationship, well, uh, I hate to break it to you. You were never the only one. Okay. With a narcissist, you really are never going to be the only one They will always have, um, you know, people on the side. It's no different to someone being on an app or, you know, looking at out, seeing what else they can get outside of the relationship. By definition, they can't, uh, narcissists are not loyal. They're only loyal to their own sense of self. They can't sustain um, loyal monogamous relationships. So, um, you know, you know that, but if you went through their phone and went through their apps, you would see very clearly that they build connections with other people. Yeah, and they're fucking other people, basically. So implementing a method of no contact is really the best um, way to go. 
You don't need to spend time with them and you're saying that you don't need their help or advice. Your life can run completely, perfectly without their presence. And the second message that you are communicating is that you don't control me and you don't decide things for me. Okay, you're pulling yourself away from them. You're showing them that you are calling the shots in your own life. Okay, that you're not sitting around waiting for them. All right. One of the main, um, if you've been ghosted by a narcissist, they go into, you know, in a relationship sense, they love bomb you and then they get you on the hook and then they go through the discard phase where they ghost you. This is a power play to create you to feel destabilized. Once they make you feel destabilized, they know that you're thinking of them. They know that they've got you on the hook while they're playing other people at the same time and seeing other people and fucking other people. You're just sitting on the shelf waiting for them to come back when they're ready. That's what a narcissist usually does. And then they'll try and wheel you back in with some um, sweet talk, um, some sweet nothings and try and pull you back in. And because you've been destabilized, you're like putty in the narcissist's hand so that they can use you as a booty call or share you with their friends or you know whatever it is that they choose to do. So when you go no contact and ignore them, you are giving them a case of their own medicine. You know, you're giving them a dose of their own medicine and you're, you're saying that your treatment of me is unacceptable and I'm not going to be putting up with it anymore, okay? You are telling them that they are not as important or relevant as they think they are. And this will make them go insane, okay? Because they can't handle the fact that you're sending them a message that they have lost you. And if you're one of the fortunate ones that has got away from a narcissist and their lies, their manipulations, their mind controls, their nasty comments, a lot of um, <clears throat> hateful and hurtful comments are usually made under the guise of a joke. So, and if you question and you say, hey, that's too much, they'll say, you know, you can't take a joke. Like everything is passive wearing you down type of thing. The moment that you figure out that they are unworkable is the moment that you can start to basically shut, shut them down and break away from them. Mm -hmm. What you're really saying is, I'm not going to put up with this. I'm not going to tolerate your toxicity. And the best and final message that you're really sending to them is that not only are you one of the ones that is fortunate to have, you know, escaped, you're actually sending them a message that you are one of the ones that got away. And this will be etched into the narcissist memory forever. They will now realize that there was someone that they couldn't manipulate and they couldn't control. The narcissist is delusional. They live in a delusional world that is kind of fragmented from reality. And so the, when they create relationships with you, they put you in basically a little box and you have to fit the box of the narrative of who you are to them. If you are talented, if you have other interests, if you grow, that will be completely ignored because that could show a threat to them that you could change and potentially leave them. And at the core, a narcissist is insecure. And that's why they need to control everyone and everything around them. And they assert themselves over everyone around them because it's a dominance thing within them to regain control within themselves by controlling other people or how other people see them. Okay. So the biggest fear that a narcissist has is what you're doing. And so when you go no contact and you remove them, you are sick, tired, and fed up with their fucking bullshit. At that point, what will happen is they will realize that you have moved on and that they can't manipulate or control you. They will create excuses in their mind that you are crazy, that you have lost your mind, that you're acting very strangely because they can't understand why you've blocked them. They'll play the victim to other people. They will play the victim to you 
as a tactic to try and wheel you back in to get you to break the no contact, okay? But the more that you go and the longer that you maintain zero contact with them is the, the, the harder it will be ultimately for them. Because at the heart of a narcissist, their biggest fear is that someone's going to wake up to them, that they're going to see who they really are and then expose the narcissist to other people publicly or that their main supply point is going to finally figure out who they are or lack of self really and then abandon them. That's their biggest fear. Everything that you say is worthless and meaningless. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, it will be manipulated. If you say anything that's real, the narcissist flips the switch. If you say to them in an attempt to tell them the truth, they'll throw it back in your face and call you a narcissist. The narcissist mirrors things around it to give the false self a projection of um, knowing who it is but it only can mirror or imitate emotions. It can't have real emotions. And that's why in the end, narcissists always end up alone and lonely and all fucked up because all of their tricks and all of their bullshit, um, you know, whether it's putting people and trapping people in financial debt so they could never leave, people eventually wake up and move away from them. And then they're left alone and alone. And that's where they really will be in their own self. Um, when it comes to a narc, it's really kind of like a write-off of a human being. Um, there's just something missing within them. And you know that, and you can feel that there's something that isn't quite right. And, you know, it, it is what it is, but, you know, removing yourself is really important because it's the only way that you can start to actually have a life without them and really just don't give in to their consistent attempts of hoovering and trying to, you know, desperately trick you to come back. That's what they'll try and do. Uh, a very common line that they might say is say, for example, um, you're growing and you're evolving, or you might've even gotten therapy and the therapist and you have figured out what's going on here. Um, they will hate that. And one of the common mindset or the lines that a narc would have when you start to pull away is, why can't we go back to the way things were? Why can't we go back to the way things, how things used to be? Okay, what they're actually saying here is, why can't you let me control you? Why can't you let me do whatever I want to you? Why are you standing up for yourself? Okay, that's what they're really saying because... They don't want you to grow or change or evolve. You have to stay in the character that they've created for you so that they can feel that they control you. So going back to the way things used to be is all that they want because that's where they had their power. When you realize that you don't need them and that you can pull away and that you have your own life, um, this is key. But I will warn you, and it's something that you will not avoid is that it is a very pernicious thing with a narc because after they're gone from your life, you will always have uh, a scar and you'll also have kind of like a presence of them for the rest of your life. And this is quite normal if you know what I'm talking about, if you've escaped a narcissistic friendship or a narcissistic relationship they'll always be with you in some kind of overcast shadowy form in your subconscious because the narcissist conditions you over long periods of time to um, basically obey them. Also remember that the narc sees you usually as a doll or a toy that they play with when they feel like it. Um, very, very similar to a lot of closeted men that use gay men for sex. Um, they see the gay man as lower than them. I'm just giving you an example. Um, this could be used in any example, really. Um, but they'll pull the, the gay man back into the closet with them into hiding. Um, and the gay man is the embodiment or the part of the narcissist that they are ashamed of and that they hide. 
So living underground double lives is very common for a narcissist um, in that regard. So just off the subject of, you know, that power dynamic and inequality of, you know, being used by someone else, the narc sees you as a toy um, to be on their shoulder. It would always be based on the projection of what it looks like to the outside world. It, it's more important to the narcissist that they are with someone that's showing them up. So the narc does go for people of higher social capital or even younger people um, that they can manipulate or control because the young, inexperienced person doesn't have the experience of life to understand what they're doing. So they're more easy to control. Also, a younger person wouldn't have had the amount of time um, to live life and have that experience, but also have monetary gain. If the narcissist has money, they will use that as a, as a way to wheel in and control someone who's younger than them to basically stick around. Um, yeah, so that being said, it, it's really, you know, it's one of those things where no matter, you know, you move on with your life and you don't need them and you don't want them in your life you do deserve a clean break, but it's, it's very dangerous the longer that you've been with them because the mindset that you're in is that you're like a, a dog that's kind of controlled like a master and a dog, like a slave. So, you know, it's a real step-by-step -step process to get away from them. Uh, a good analogy would actually be like black, thick, sticky tar um, you know, when you touch it on your fingers, it's so difficult to get it off. It's, you know, it's, it's so difficult because they latch on so tightly um, and, and really um, get into your psyche so that they kind of stay within you even long after it's over. And that's why I believe that you will need some level of therapy after it's done. Um, and of course, they will stalk you online. Also going no contact from your end um, will not prevent them from watching you every single day, watching you online, cyber stalking you, um, watching your whereabouts, trying to hack you, trying to download malware on your phone. They need to know where you are at all times. Um, you know, it, it's really quite psychotic. It, it's very psychotic. If you are dealing with a narcissist that is on the Machiavellian scale of what we call the dark triad, um, which is in psychopathy, you are in a lot of trouble. So there's a difference between a psychopath and a narcissist. Psychopaths are narcissistic in general, um, but narcissists are just below that on the scale. So talking to them is pointless. It's, as I've mentioned before, it's all a complete waste of time. Everything that you do and say, they, they want you to interact with them because when you're interacting with them, no matter what level of contact it is in, in, in whatever form it is, you're still interacting with them, which is giving them the supply that they desperately need. Okay. So I hope all of this helped. I know I've covered a lot. Um, it's been a, you know, bit of a, a bang, <laughs> a bit of a, a hit here, but this is what's going on. Um, I congratulate you from the bottom of my heart. If you have been able to get away from them or get away from one, it's, it's so dangerous to be around them. And um, the moment that you wake up, it is key. And then of course, taking action is the steps. You know, it is a process. So always know that they will be stalking you um, from afar and that will never end until the day that you drop dead or the day that they drop dead. Um, it, that's just in their nature. It, it's who they are. So I will leave it here. I hope that all of these points have helped. And this is why no contact is the best form of um, interaction with, with these individuals. There is no other way, no other way. Okay, I'll leave it here and thank you so much for your time.